2023 general elections do not die in their war. With the obvious decline in the standard of living and exodus of Nigerians to other countries in recent times, one may be tempted to forgive the vituperation that has greeted the election season. After all, it is often said that desperate times call for desperate measures. However, it appears that we have not learned our lessons from previous elections. Our approach in this election cycle is not different from what played out towards the 2015 general elections, when it was believed that the ruling party at the time had grossly underperformed and should be changed. So the campaign mantra was change. Everyone clamored for change, was obviously angry and couldn't wait to see the much touted change manifest. Even when a few calm ones amongst us cautiously asked, what if the desired change is just a flash in the pan? It was widely coerced and that it was widely coerced that if the change didn't seem like it, we will change the change. Well, those of us still alive now can attest to it if the change has served us well. Meanwhile, we are the threshold of history once again, and we seem not to be different in our approach. The anger with which many are showing their support for their preferred candidate is uncalled for. The hatred they have for those with other choices is undemocratic. Some of us need to be reminded that we practice democracy. We are at liberty to have divergent opinions and have different political leanings. Our choices, however, do not make us more Nigerian than other Nigerians. The biggest fear in what is playing out presently amongst Nigerians is that we have been divided beyond electoral choices. In the bid to enforce our choices on others, we have been torn apart along ethnic and religious divides. And if the goal is to achieve a better Nigeria, we need to respect people's choices and do not allow the politician to use us as pound in their game. The 2023 elections will be won and lost. Even if your private candidate doesn't win, ensure you don't lose valuable friendship along the way. The politicians are wiser in this regard. They always find a way out. To them, it is a friendly war. Do not die in their war. Hmm. You've said it all. Change the change. Next level, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, um, unify, nice, obedient. Mm -hmm. Well, we've said it all, we should not die in their way. Election, let's come to election with the spirit of sportsmanship. You come, say why we should, convince us why we should support your candidate. If we decide to support your candidate, good and fine. If we don't support your candidate, still good and fine. Whatever the outcome is, our focus should be the Nigeria. The country is for us. We are in this country. We are the country. The country is not just this geographical location. We are safe at the country. If you have a geographical location with no people, there is no country. You get exactly. So forget about all these gimmicks or all these tactics from politicians. The question is, who has the nation at large? Exactly. At large? So just uh, to add to what you have said, so you've actually uh, said a lot of things in your presentation, right? Uh, I, I will look at it like, like I always say, is an individual politics, not the country at art. Let's Imagine, Peter will be this obedient drive of a thing. He was, last year, a member of PDP. If the zoning mm -hmm. has favored him to zone the election, uh, to the presidential candidate to the Southeast, South will he have leave PDP? Perhaps not. Perhaps not. Right? So, what stopped him from saying, if I'm not the candidate, why don't I join and, and still fight for the interest of the people? working with the party's preferred candidate if the party is forced, not an individual I mean forced. Do you understand? The same thing goes to uh, the, the interest of the likes of Tinubu, the likes of Atiku, the likes of every other uh, candidate we have there. Is it the party, you know, it comes back to the same party ideology. What do they have to offer? What is the party actually bringing to the table? What, if you look at, let us quickly go back to South Africa. There is this uh, parliament uh, leader, a senator that is leading. I say, this is my party. If you're asking me to drop the party ideology, and the party says, go otherwise, 
I'm afraid I will resign as the party's preferred candidate because the party is going against the value they have set. That is what we should be looking at. Beyond the election, what are the aftermath of this election process? What should we expect? Is it the candidate or is it the result that we desire? I think a common factor that has always played out in our elections is the kind of hunger in the electorates. And so I think the hunger, uh, most of the time, blinds us to see the real reason why we are picking a different candidate from who is in government. So we, we deal with consequences, and then after taking that decision, we just leave every other thing to God, that God will help us. <laughs> and like they said uh, in, the, in the build up to the 2015 election, they said, uh, if the change does not manifest, we'll change, we'll change, change. the change. <laughs> but we're we're I, able to change the in change. The, in the last <laughs> seven and a half years, and, and there about, we have not been able to change the change. So the, the, the caution that we preach here is that even as you take a choice, as you make a choice in this election, mm. your, your choice of candidate does not mean okay. you are more Nigerian than the than other Nigerians. Mm. Everybody wants the uh, better conditions for this country. So let us all take our choices and then work towards it. Uh, I mean, when you, are, when you are canvassing for votes, ensure you are doing it with all the quorum. Mm. That, is the, that is the message. Yeah, Kuti. Well, Kuti, I, I'd like you to know something, Kuti. I don't know whether you observed some couple of minutes ago that was this particular clergyman. I'm not going to mention the, part, the church. He was trending on social media and he was saying that he is a Yoruba man. He cannot vote for someone from another tribe. I was like, this is a clergyman saying this thing. He's not supposed to say this because I, don't, I want to believe there are other people from other tribes other in tribes. his church. Exactly. He's not supposed to say that. So, Kuti, what's your thoughts on this thing? You know, 2023 election is coming and that's the... I don't want to use the word headache, but see, Nigerians are having sleepless night over this thing, and mm -hmm. it's very important to us because whatever happens next year decides the fate of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, for me, I think, again, you know, we keep on repeating the same mistakes. I think 2023 is looking like 2015 over again. It's as if Nigeria suffers, suffers from a savior complex. Mm -hmm. We're always looking for one savior to come and solve all Nigeria's problems. And I keep on explaining to people, and that is what causes the, the anger and the disaffection amongst us. Because once one person from a particular tribe shows up, the other people from his tribe will start building the narrative that this is the best candidate. If you don't support him, you are a, a, a traitor, you are a, you know, the, you know, it's this same savior complex. And I keep on telling people that you cannot rely on a man, a single individual, with a good heart to change the nation like ours. Not after what we've gone through, not after a civil war, not after the division of the last seven years. I think that the reason why people are always angry is because every time an election comes, anger blinds us to not to see the clear path. Look at Buhari, for instance, in 2015. It was clear from his history in 1983-84 that the man had nothing to offer. And he hadn't improved himself over the last 30 years. But people still felt, they said all sorts of things before he won the election. Oh, Buhari has an Igbo coup. Buhari has the, the tribalized. Buhari doesn't have a house anywhere apart from Kaduna and Daura, which were lies. And even when people put the, the truth in front of them, they refused to see the truth because they were driven by this anger, which is what I've seen again repeating itself. And I think that Nigeria just need to take, take a step back. Like I said, if you, if we, whoever wins the election, we're all going to suffer together. Even me, I'm here. People will say, oh, I've left Nigeria. I'm no longer in Nigeria. So how does this affect me? Well, I always tell them that it affects me because I, the pressure from Nigeria on me right now is a hundred times what it used to be, you know, five, four years ago, five years ago. And, you know, you know, for me, I just, I always say that I, all, all I'm asking people to do is allow others to interrogate you. And you interrogate the candidates themselves. If somebody tells you, is innocent, is, is pure, is no, there's no human being that's perfect. Don't bother about those things. Focus on what they can do and what they are telling you that they will deliver on. I think that, that for, that's why they talk about this um, idea of uh, uh, an issue-based campaign. And it's for a, a deliberate reason. 
Well, it's true anyway. Any politician or anybody can decide to attach to any political organization or association of their choice. Mm. The most important thing is let's have the nations at hand. Let's have exactly. the nation. It's not a crime to be a member of EPC or support EPC. Neither is it a taboo to support PDP. Mm. Neither is it out of order to be a member or support Liberal Party and other parties. But whatever thing you do, don't fight yourself. Let's see that we are one Nigeria, one country, one people. The goal is to change Nigeria and position us globally, not to kill ourselves before the next election. Exactly. Just in addition to what you said, Kuti said something the other time where he said, what drives people to be more of a patriotic citizen is a system that cares about its citizenry, mm -hmm. right? We should also be clamoring because I don't see very few people who are not so much popular are talking about that kind of system. The, the, the political uh, presidential candidates that we have in PDP, APC, they are not talking about building any system. I think this should be our concern of a system that will make us vouch and want to die for the country. Building institutions. Building institutions. Stronger than individuals. At all yeah. sector. That's my yeah, own that's take. Okay. I think uh, the message is clear from all our contributions. Uh, after this election, there will still be Nigeria. And then we need to do everything and put our, our, our behaviors and, and all antics in checks towards the 2023 general election. We want Nigeria after the election. Hussein Olari Waju is next after the break. Stay with us.